My name is uh, Mayor Mark Salinas. I was born and raised in Hayward, went to Chabot. I transferred to uh, San Francisco State University. My bachelor's degree is in La Raza Studies. I have a master's degree in Educational Administration and Public Policy Studies. My name is Josefina Ramirez Natsana and I attended UC Riverside and I majored in Political Science and Chicano Studies. Through the California Assembly Fellowship Program, I attended Sacramento State and did some courses in their government program. Choosing uh, La Raza Studies as a major really goes back, I mean, you know, goes back to Puente. I don't think I ever read a book written by a Latino until I got to Chabot College. When I was in Puente, our first book that we were assigned was Bless Me Ultima by Rudolfo Anaya. You know, I'd bring my books home and my dad would often thumb through my books and you know, he would see what I was reading. It opened up a whole new conversation at home about identity, about being raza. We lived very Mexican lives, you know, food and, and culture and it wasn't something that we sort of uh, reflected on a lot. My identity, right, was, was very much American. I mean, you know, I was, you know, of course I was born and raised here, but you know, we were very much you know, uh, an American family. As I was taking classes and, and picking on a major, I was in uh, Raza Studies classes, and it all started to make sense. And the saliency of identity in, you know, academic development and professional development and, you know, community life. For me, it was, uh, uh, that was a big turning point in my life. What led me to choose Chicano Studies as a major was my experience attending the Chicano Latino Youth Leadership Project um, conference as a high school student. It was the first time I ever learned about the Chicano experience here in California. I heard about uh, Latino leadership, it, our state elected officials. That experience really um, interested me and really made me question why I did not learn about Chicano or Latino history in my high school. When I attended uh, UC Riverside, I started taking some courses in Chicano studies, um, Chicano sociology, Chicano history, Chicana literature, and I just really enjoyed all of my professors. I made some of my best friends in the Chicano studies courses. We were all student activists together, but we all were, you know, representing our community and learning about our community. I took so many different courses that I was like, hey, I'm halfway to a major. Um, and so I, I ended up double majoring. I'm the mayor of Hayward and I work for the city of Hayward. So I'm the 47th mayor of the city of Hayward. I'm the first non-white mayor of the city of Hayward. And I'm the first Latino mayor of the city of Hayward. I currently work um, at Children Now, which is a policy research um, and legislative development organization. We do advocacy on all kids' issues uh, prenatal to 26. My title is I am the Director of Early Childhood Dual Language Learners and English Learners, which means that I work on maternal mental health, maternal health, everything that affects child care for our kids that are under five. I do government relations, legislative advocacy, budget, um, and policy. What are our policies? What needs a fix or a change? How do we keep the best interests of kids and families? How do we support families that need services and resources? I'm responsible for primarily three things. We set the policy vision for the city of Hayward and we establish the priorities for the city of Hayward. The third thing is we manage an annual budget of a little over $400 million. That budget, of course, covers all of the critical areas of the city. We hire uh, three employees, the city manager, the city clerk, and the city attorney. We have the police department, the fire department, public works, the library. That keeps us busy around here. A typical day is we set our agenda for our year, um, our yearly initiatives, uh, things that we're focusing on, whether it's regulatory, legislative, budget, um, and we work towards implementing some of those projects throughout the year. We do a lot of working with other partners to get folks on board and, you know, speaking in one voice, we do a lot of coalition work. We have to think about the work that we do and making sure that we're focused on, we are representing kids and families. We meet with uh, different partners and stakeholders. Um, sometimes we have to go to the Capitol and do testimony on behalf of our organization. Um, and I have to, you know, be on camera and, you know, be ready to testify and say, you know, Josefina Aramidas Natsana, on behalf of Children Now, we are advocating for X issue. Um, and so I do that maybe once or twice a week. The critical work experience would be uh, teaching Chicano history. 
in class, it was marrying these two ideas between uh, the Latino community and um, the impact that local government has on people and on children and families at the local level. The central tenet of Raza Studies is community service, right? It's service. The academic side of the discipline, but there's also the community side of the discipline. Everything we do on campus is for the benefit of the community. So students would take my class and, you know, we were always engaged in activities in, in, the, uh, in the city. The program that I've been involved with, you know, for almost 30 years now is a little program called the Kids Breakfast Club. The Kids Breakfast Club is a nutrition and education program for kids and families here in Hayward. And we cook and serve breakfast to kids and we have activities for kids and families when school's not in session. You know, I'm always telling students, be involved in something, you know, and that's really how all this started. A lot of that came right out of the principles of Puente, La Raza Studies, and education. One of the reasons that I'm here doing the work that I do um, is because of my experience going to the Chicano Latino Youth Leadership Project. It really um, piqued my interest in, in policy and advocacy, thinking about how our communities are, are represented in, in legislation and policy every single day. And that led me to get involved in student government and advocacy as, a, as an undergraduate student. When I was thinking about what to do after I graduated, I heard about the California State Assembly Fellowship Program. You're a full-time legislative staffer and you're a part-time Sac State government program student. I worked as a legislative staffer for about eight years. I learned about, you know, the, the ins and outs of working for an elected official, representing a, a constituency, representing a district. I have enjoyed being legislative staff, but also thinking about how to work on the flip side as an advocate and how to focus on an issue area that helps the foundation of early childhood leads to uh, better outcomes for, for kids and families. I also did some work with a public relations firm. A lot of the work that we did was working with government agencies to tap into and reach underserved communities, whether it be Latino, API, or black communities, and how to promote state programs and services to the communities that need these resources, whether it be health insurance or whether it be community college programs. It was also a great experience in thinking authentically about how Latino community is outreached to and how we have trusted messengers, we have different networks. It really was a great experience to, to learn and to really provide some input and to um, state government agencies that were paying for these communications efforts. The biggest influence Puente has had on me is my ongoing commitment to service. Every time I walk into the community, there's two things that I carry. One is my ethnic identity, my cultural identity, my Chicano identity, and two is my responsibility to the community. When I walk out there in the community, I know people look at me as a Latino mayor, you know, and that's pretty powerful. The takeaway from Puente is that service is front and center of everything they do. Learning that at a very early age in my academic career, um, I think that that's a, that's a powerful takeaway because it's something that I've learned and I've kept my entire career. My experience being a Puentista at Magnolia High School um, in Anaheim, um, I had a phenomenal counselor, Steve Gonzalez, my teachers, uh, Kelly Gallagher and Robin Turner. It was amazing to, to hear about the Chicano Latino experience. We read Sandra Cisneros, The House on Mango Street. We read Victor Villaseñor, Reina Gold. We also started a Puente Club. And through the Puente Club was to think about leadership development, to think about opportunities. And I think um, that's one of the things that I credit most with the Puente Program, identifying the, the group of students and then also giving them opportunities to be leaders and to be part of different opportunities on campus. We also had a really great um, college tour um, where we visited different um, Cal States and different UCs. I mean, it really opened my eyes to the opportunities that were out there and it really exposed me to networks like the Chicano Latino Youth Leadership Program and, and um, lifelong uh, friends and, and mentors. My advice is Chicano Studies, Chicano Studies tightly coupled with another major will only make your career better because that's where you'll really see the intersection between the Latino community, culture, language, 
family experience with other aspects of work or you know the other work that we're doing in the community. You can major in you know Chicano studies and you can also double major in criminal justice. You don't necessarily have to be a police officer. If you want to go into police reform policy and to have a Chicano studies, Chicana studies, criminal justice major, you know, background, those are strong degrees. I didn't double major. I did uh, La Raza studies and I did philosophy. I did political philosophy. That's how I ended up here. <laughs> For students that are thinking about majoring in Chicano studies, do your research. There's a lot of great programs out there. There's a lot of colleges and universities. Are you geared towards the academic track? Or are you geared towards the working for a community-based organization that represents community? Um, and using that as training ground, learning ground, to be an advocate, to think about getting into policy, whether it be working for an elected official or volunteering on a political campaign or an issue campaign. A good opportunity to learn how to become an advocate is working with a nonprofit and learning how to work with community and learning how to also work with government and work with um, government entities.